Hello everyone, I am Santosh and I welcome you to my channel Learning Bits. In this video, I uh, will be just showing you exactly how we are going to design and how we are going to display a cube in OpenGL program. And so now, uh, to do this, whatever the previous session or previous video code I had. Now this is the code which I had discussed in the previous video. So which is going to draw me a rectangle. Fine. So now to understand what this each API is going to do, I have been explained from the basic in the previous video. You can just go through that. If you go through that video, you can clearly understand what all this API does and how exactly this program will be used to draw such rectangle or a square on your graphics window. Fine. And the video link I will be putting in the description so that it will be helpful for you to look out if you have not watched that video earlier. The same program we are going to use and we are going to modify this program so that we will be able to get a cube. So from a square, we will be able to get a cube now. And when I talk about a square, it is going to be about these four points. So let me maximize this. I will look at this. So we are going to have these four points. If I am drawing a square with only x and y axis. And now when I talk about a cube, the z axis will also come into picture. With the minimum value as minus 1 and the maximum value as plus 1 in the unit coordinate system. And now all point, the four points, what we are going to draw a square, it takes two two values because of it's a 2D, 2D object with x and y value. But now when I talk about a cube, it is going to have three values. Every point is going to have three values and I'm going to have eight points over here. I'll be having eight points here. And so now the each point is going to have three values, the x, y and the z. So if you just look at the x and y values, so these are identical for all the eight points. If I compare with this, this is going to be identical values. Whereas only the z value is going to vary. I'm going to have minus 0.5, the z value, minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 0.5 for the back face of the cube. And for the front face, I'll be having 0.5 plus 0.5 plus and plus and so on. As when I talk about a cube, this is the eight points what I can bring out with the x axis, y and the z axis. So please be clear with this. The point you need to identify clearly with x, y and z the eight points. Using these eight points, we'll be drawing the six faces of the cube. And each face is going to be again a square. And so now I'll be showing you exactly how this should be done. And so now for that, we'll get back to the program. So now we'll bring the points into the program. But before that, this is an OpenGL basic program, which is going to give you how to draw a 2D object. So now let me copy this code and I'm going to put in the next code, which is going to name this as lab one. And so let me increase this font. And so now I will just show you what modification you should do because if I talk about this program, now this is going to be the basic program to display 2D object. But now I am talking about a 3D object. So hence I need to do some slight modification. Now just first observe what are the modification I should do so that I can transform from a 2D program to an 3D OpenGL program. Just look at this major modifications what you should do. The first modification, go to the function glut init display mode. This is what I told in the previous video that if you are talking about a 3D or a 2D object, this is where you need to concentrate on. So let this be glut RGB. I am going to work in the same color model. But now, I am talking about a 3D, now hence this should be replaced with GLUT double 
I need to use double buffer now, not the single buffer. If it was a 2D program, then it would have been GLUT double. And so now it should be GLUT double. If it's 2D, it should be GLUT single. If it's 3D, it should be GLUT double. And XOR operation, the second change. This is the first change what you should replace with a GLUT single along with GLUT double. The next change is out of this two buffers. So now when I say GLT double, it is going to say it. I am going to have two buffers now. Fine. Now in these two buffers, out of these two buffers, one buffer I am going to use as a color buffer. The second buffer I will be using it as a depth buffer to hold the Z values, to deal with the Z coordinates, to deal with the back faces, to deal with the hidden surfaces. For to deal with all these issues, I will be using the other buffer as a depth buffer. And this is the second major change where you need to say that your window will also work with the depth buffer and the depth buffer algorithm or the Z buffer algorithm to deal with the hidden surface or to deal with the back surfaces. This is the second change. The first change, GLT double. The second change, GLT depth. And don't use comma over here. We are not going to use comma here because this will be used with the XOR operation. This is 16. I'm going to have a, a value defined for this as 2 and all this will be XOR and pass 1 value. This is the second change. The first change and the second change. Fine. And let me change the title of this and let me give this as lab program 2 or lab program 3. So where I'm going to have Q in spin because I'll be even showing you how to spin a cube along with drawing a cube. I'll be even showing you how to spin a cube. Fine. So now having this as the title, this is not this is not so important when it's converting from a 2D to 3D program. It is just how we are going to code this and how the title we have been decided. And so nothing else you need to change here. The first change and the second change. Fine. And the third change. The third change is now when you are clearing the buffer, now we have got two buffers. The color buffer and the depth buffer. Both the buffers should be cleared. Again, don't use comma here. Use the X or bitwise or operation. And you need to clear the depth buffer also. Hence, we are going to use GL depth buffer bit. I am clearing both the buffers. This, this is the third change. The first change is GL double. The second change is GL depth. And the third change is you need to clear the depth buffer also. Hence, once you are going to use the fourth change is now when you want to put the content onto the display, the flush is not going to work. The flush should be replaced with GLUT swap buffers. I'll be swapping the two buffers, the front buffer and the back buffer, what I call the color is the front buffer and depth is the back buffer. I'll be swapping the content of this. Hence, we're going to use GLUT swap buffers. And there's the fourth change. Fine. And now the fifth change is now vertex, whatever we are going to use. Each vertex is going to contain three, three points. It's going to contain three values, X, Y, Z. All ends, we need to use the function as GL vertex 3F, not GL vertex 2F now. Fine. This is the fifth change what you need to bring in. Hence, if you bring in this five changes, so right now your program is ready to work in 3D environment. Fine. So now we will just bring in that function or how exactly we're going to draw. Exactly we're going to draw a cube in my program. So now I said to you when I want to draw a cube, I need to draw how many faces? Yes, it's going to be six faces. And each face is going to be an is going to be a square itself. Hence this is what I'll be doing. This is what I'll be doing to draw the faces. So now instead of having this as a constant while values, what I'll be doing is 
I'll be creating, I'm going to create a data structure, a data type, something called as GL float. Instead of just using float, so it will be good enough to use the data type of OpenGL library only. Still, this will work with the float also, but it is good practice to use the data type of OpenGL library as GL float. And I am just going to give this as point, it has P, or I can say vertices. I am going to say vertices of how many points I am going to have. I am going to have 8 points for to draw a cube and each point is going to have 3 values x, y and z. Hence I am going to initialize all these values now. I am going to initialize all these values. First let me initialize all these values. So next we will see how exactly this point should be used. Hence I am doing this just to structure my program. So you can do it in one single line itself. But I am doing this so that I can have clear clear structure of what I am doing in my program. And so now I am just going to put the points over here because so this is something where you should know about array initialization. Right now this is what I am doing here is array initialization. So now in this the first point what I am going to have. So let me just look at the cube what I am going to have. Fine. And so this is the cube points what I want to put. So let me zoom this. Okay, fine. Okay, let me zoom this and this is the point. So now, now let me have this as the first point. Or oh, this is going to be the first point. And let me take this as the first point now. So which is going to be minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And so I'm going to have minus 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 right and this is going to be this is going to be vertex of 0 vertex of 0 is going to be with the three values so which is going to be minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 this is going to be vertex 0 now and now similarly i am just going to do it for the second point the second point, let me take this as the second point now, which is going to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. So let me give the space for sig sign if I am using negative value. And now once this is done, so now let me give the next point, which is going to be the front face, this point. It's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 on the y axis and plus on the z axis. So now let me copy this and let me paste it over here. Fine. And now this point is going to be minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, plus 0 0.5. So the four points of the front face is done. So similarly, I'm going to copy this because the x and y value will be intact only the z value is going to change and so if you just clearly observe the behind four points or x and y value will be same only the z value will change from positive to negative all the z values will change from positive to negative and so now i am going to have this four points i have been represent this as the four points which is going to be in my program and remember and somewhere noted down this is going to be 0, that is V0, V1, V2, V3. This is V4, V5, V6 and V7. I can remember this, but you need to note down somewhere over here so that you can clearly understand how the flow will go on. Fine, so now with this, the point has been put into the data structure instead of using constant i am going to use this as data structure now so now whenever i am going to have this as the point so now i need to have a function so let me define my own user defined function called as q now whenever i want to draw a q i am just going to use the function q now how many points you require to draw a q this eight points and let me pass this eight points as parameter and the vertices or to just keep it simple let me make this as v this is going to solve my job that is i'm just going to have this as v 
and so I'm going to have this as v of 0 is the first point and v of 1 is the second point v of 2 v of 3 and this is the four points of my friend face and v of 4 v of 5 v of 6 and v of 7 and the next four points of the back face now whenever i want to draw a cube i'll be just calling this cube function by passing this eight points and so this is how we are going to do now and now whenever i'm going to have a cube when i'm going to have a cube and so this is going to be a user defined function and so void cube now which takes how many parameters eight parameters and each parameter is going to be gl float and what i am passing i am passing a single dimension array and it is going to be a single dimension array and so i am going to use this as use this as v I can just call this as v1 or v0. If you have labeled this as v0, I'll be having v0 over here. And similarly, I need to have eight points from v0 to v7. I'll be just copying this. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight. And now let me change all this point. So this is v7 and this is v6. And this is V5, this is V4, V3, V2, V1, and this is V0. Hence, now my function is going to take this 8 parameters. Let me open the body of this function now. And once I am going to open the body of this function, now in this function, when I'm going to have a cube, so what exactly you should do in a cube? You need to draw faces of the cube. You should draw the face of the cube ends. So let me call the function face. And how many faces you should draw? You should draw eight faces. Fine. Hence I can call this face function eight times. Now if I'm going to have user defined function as face, now this is going to help me to draw the eight faces so if I want to draw a face just call this function and so if I want to draw six faces of a cube I'm going to call this face function six times and this is what I'm going to do in this cube function and each face is going to be a square you are already aware each face is going to be a square or a rectangle and now in the previous video what was I was discussing the previous program what I have or discussed now this is going to uh, contain the function to draw a rectangle a face now is going to be a square or rectangle ends now whatever I was doing here I'll be just cutting this out so cut this complete code and I'm going to put this as part of face function fine so now just look at this just look at what I have made I am calling the cube function cube function is going to call the face function and the face is going to draw me a square so this fine this is how this is how the program I have been structured right now to make it easier and to look it easier so now in this function whenever I want to draw a square how many points you require you require four points to draw a square hence let me take those four parameters as gl float a and i'll be having gl float b so this is what i'm saying this as i'm going to take four points i'll be having this as gl float here i need to have four points hence the four points will be in the form of a b c d and so I'm going to have GL float A, B, C, and D. And this is going to be now, I'm just going to make use of those points in the function. Now, the first point is going to be stored in the array A. Hence, the X value is in A. And the Y value is in A of 1. And the Z value is in A of 2. I need to use in this way. If I, and this is going to be S, it is going to be B of 0, B of 1, B of 2. But 
instead of doing it as individual value if you have your points the x y value and z value in a array you need not do this there's a simple way to do this i can just pass the entire array itself and if you want to pass the entire array itself as the three values of the as a point then you need to use the function gl vertex 3fv hence i am going to have gl vertex 3fv here and i am going to pass the point 3 to draw the square and this is going to be d and i'm going to have v hence now just understand when should you use v and when you should use not v if you're not using v here then i need to pass individual values of x y z something like this and if you are using v you can pass the entire array itself as a parameter now this is done almost i have done with the face fine so now i'm just going to have the face and now this is the first face what i'm going to draw and whenever i'm going to draw a face i need to pass four points and right now in the cube i've got eight points i need to make the combination of this i need to make the combination of this so now the point what i've given here is now this is v0 this is v1 v2 and v3 so to draw the front face i need to pass the parameter as v0 v1 v2 and v3 so the points which i need to pass to draw the front face and to draw the back face i am going to pass the parameter as uh, this is v4 and this is v5 v6 v7 this is what i need to pass so v4 is done i am just going to add this as v5 and this is sorry so this should be v4 and v5 v6 and v7 right so now this i'm going to have two face over here so now uh, let me let me see whether it's going to work fine or not and later on we'll just put some other some other faces over here fine so now i'm just going to have these two faces so let me compile this program at this point and see whether it's going to work fine or not if there any mistake we'll solve this and later we'll put few more faces i'm just going to compile this so no any error because if you want to see the logs you can just go to this view tab and click on the log and just enlarge this so zero errors and zero warnings that's fine and i'm going to execute this fine so now i'm able to see a face over here i'm able to see a face so now what about the back face then what about the back face so before uh, uh, so before i'm going to show you how i'm going to put the six faces so i just want you to be clear with this program rather than it's not, not the aim of just displaying a cube i want you to understand the program clearly how it is going to work it's not the end result it's the process what we make and so i want you to clearly understand how this cube is building up with the two faces i am able to see only one face with the second face it's exactly behind the front face since i am not able to see this now how should be how i should be able to see this if i want to see this i need to rotate i need to rotate the cube if i i am going to have a cube if i am going to rotate this then i am be able to see the back face also and for this case now let me bring in the spin functions the rotation using spin i'll be using the rotations or using rotations i'll be spinning the cube and later on i'll be adding up the remaining faces for the cube is it fine and so now i'll just show you how to bring in the spin function to bring in the spin function the first thing is you need to use the callback function called as glut idle function we're going to use glt idle function that is whenever your program will go into idle state i need to call the idle function and start spinning the cube hence we are going to pass a function called as spin now this spin is not a inbuilt function this is a callback function which will make use of spin to rotate or to spin any object in your program hence i am going to have spin as an user defined function which is going to help me to spin a cube 
fine or spin a object and now this is a user defined function and whatever the function you're going to pass for this i'll just show you the parameter what this function takes now whatever the function this is going to take as a callback function she can have any name of your choice but should take zero parameter and return nothing hence let me have the function name as spin and now this is a user defined function now again hence i am going to have a function called as spin a function called as spin which takes no parameters and now this is the time where i am going to spin some object over here or rotate an object i'll just come back to this spin function later but now once i am going to draw a cube if i want to rotate this cube i am going to use gl rotate function i'm using gl rotate f or a rotate d now this gl rotate function is going to take four parameters the first parameter is the angle of rotation and with respect to which axis is going to say with respect to which axis so now let me give the angle as 90 degree or 45 degree of any degree what choice now with respect to which axis you want the spin so if i want the spin in this way then we are going to call this as x axis so keeping the y axis as a line for spin if i try to rotate the object in this direction we call this as spin with respect to y axis and if we keep the z x axis intact and if you rotate the object in this direction we call this with respect to x axis and keeping the z axis intact and if you rotate the object in this way we are going to have the z axis rotation and so right now just think which axis rotation you require if it is y axis so make it 0 comma 1 comma 0 hence rotation will be applied with respect to y axis and rotation angle is 90 degree and before you apply the rotation make sure you are going to use load identity else the rotation will be keep on multiplied i am going to load the identity matrix then apply the rotation of what choice you are going to have and this should happen before you draw the queue and now save this and compile and execute right so now you're not able to see anything because you have spinned it with 90 degree maybe that's the case so let me change the degree now let me give the degree as 45 degree Now this is what I am going to get. But if you just observe, though I have been rotated with the 45 degree, uh, you are not able to see both the faces. Uh, I think you are able to see both the faces. But the problem here is, the problem is both the faces of same color. Because I have been initialized the drawing color to be of color red. And that is what all the face is going to be of color red. So let me change this then. So let me use the GL color 3F, GL color 3F and I'm just going to draw the front face to be red as it is doing until now and the back face let me put this to be in the color green. I want it to be in green and save this. So now we'll just check it out. we are able to see both the face yeah this is what 45 degree rotation is going to make all about fine i hope it's clear but now just look at this the rotation has been applied and it has rotated only with only with 45 degree and still static it's not it's not like a spinning it's not like a cube is spinning if it wants to happen then i want to i want to change this degree every time i want to change it should not be constant one hence i am going to place this with a variable called as t that is the theta what i call is a short as t hence now this t value is going to start from i am going to have this as a global variable so gl float t with zero degree will start the rotation with the zero degree and in the spin function let me increase the degree now so t equals t plus 1 
that is I am increasing the degree by 1 and it is a rotation once the t value is going to reach the maximum as 360 I need to reinitialize the t value to be 0 and once this is done once you have applied or update the t value so make sure you are going to call glut post read display function because you have updated the theta value you have updated the rotation hence you need to make sure that you are going to have this effect to be reflected on the object what you have been using and so this function should be called for immediate purpose that is now for example just look at this my program starts here it is going to call the callback function it is going to call this draw function initializes the point clears the buffer loads the identity matrix and rotates with zero degree initially and draws the cube and once the cube is drawn the function will go to the cube function it is going to draw these two faces and get backs and just say GLT swap buffer and its job is done and once the job is done it will go to idle state when it goes to idle state this callback function will be called the idle function will call whenever the program will go to idle state and now this function in turn is going to call the spin function and the spin function the spin function will be called where the spin function is going to update the value of t and checks whether it has reached the maximum value or not if not or if so it is going to call the grt post read display and this function will call the display callback function back and display callback function will call the draw function and the draw function will call glt swap buffer and it will go to idle state when it goes to idle state idle function will be called it's going to call the spin function the spin function in turn will call the post read display function again this function we're going this will be in cycle in a loop now we have created a loop fine and so now with this changes if i'm going to compile this and if i'm going to execute this now this is the spin what i'm going to have now if you just observe so now this the speed is going to be more if i want to reduce the speed you need not do any major logic here so just decrease the value of this to 0 0.5 i am reducing the size by off over here fine so still if you want to reduce the speed i can still make this as 0 0.25 Right? So, I can still reduce this so that I can have a clear view of exactly what's happening. So, 0 0.05. Right? It's fine. So, now you can see both the front face and the back face. Is it clear? I hope you are clear with this. So, how exactly we can bring in the spin function and how we are going to draw a cube. So, now uh, before I draw the other four faces of the cube, I just want to stress one point over here. Whenever going to pass these points, the eight points what you are passing, make sure you are going to be good at the order. You need to make sure you, you need to maintain the order. If this is V0, V1, V2, V3 should be given same order. What if I give in a zigzag order? That is, I'll be using V0, I'll be giving V1 and V3 and V2. Now what happens? Just check it out. If I am going to give this as V3 and if I change the order, either it should be in the clockwise or anti-clockwise, but never give the inputs or the points in the zigzag order. Now, if I compile this and execute, just look at what has happened now because this is you are not maintained the order. Yes, if such error occurs, occurs, so just think you have made some mistake in the point order what you have given. Fine. So, let me correct this it has 2 and it has 3 fine and now this is done and now let us continue drawing the cube the other six faces and so let me copy this code because i want to set the color and i need to call the face function and let me draw this face by using by using the color blue 
and so now what is the face we want to draw let me say this as the left face what i want to draw so this left face is now this is v0 this is v3 and this is v7 and this is v4 so i'll be having v0 v3 v7 and v4 let me save this and check it out whether it's working fine or not yeah i've just got one more face which is going to be the left face now and now instead of spinning this in the y axis alone let me spin this in both x and y axis hence i'm giving 110 over here to rotate this in both the x and y axis Yes, let me compile this and execute this so now i am able to see the three faces is it clear now and so now let me draw the next face now and to draw the next face i'll be making use of this right face as to put the right face the points what i want to use is this is v1 and this is v2 and this is v6 and this is v5 and so let me copy this which is over here and as i told this is going to be v1 and this is v2 and this is v6 so if you are noted down you can clearly uh, map what i am explaining with v6 v7 and so on and this is v5 and the color what i want to use now is let me mix the red and the blue color the mixture of red and blue color so let me execute this fine so now i have got i got the left and right also fine and now the next two faces i want to draw the top and the bottom face now and so now let me let me just label for your understanding now this is going to be front face and this is back and this is left and this is right so now i want to put it to be bottom and the top so let me do it do it at once and now this should be should be the top face for me and so what is top this is going to be v0 v1 v5 and v4 v0 v1 v5 and v4 and the bottom face is v v3 we start from this v3 and this is v2 and this is v7 this is v7 this is v6 and this is v7 and let me change the color now now this is going to be the mixture of red and green and let me say as mixture of green and blue so i made all the color combination using these three values okay so save this and try this fine or is there something missing so the red face is missing i'm not able to see the red face all the five faces are there but the red face is missing over here and the red face is missing because i will tell you why because red face water i'm going to put now this is has been swapped this is what happens when i'm going to give the order now the i'm saying this is a front face but while drawing this becomes the back face but is the first face i am drawing over this face this is going to overlap hence i am able to see this face but this face overlapped and i am not able to see this if i want to see the back face also then you need to activate the z buffer hence we'll go to my init 
and I need to activate the Z buffer and so I'm going to say GL enable GL enable GL depth test I'm going to guess a GL depth test so by doing this the Z buffer will be enabled and once the Z buffer is enabled even the back face will also be visualized when I'm going to apply the rotation so now yeah the red face back face is visible now this is what we are going to have a cube which is going to be called as a spinning color cube is it fine and so this are the few apis which you need to look out for and in the next video i'll be showing you how exactly we are going to use the camera for the same spinning cube I'll be bringing in the camera features and the camera properties and I'll be making or I'll be allowing the user to control the camera but through the keyboard I should be able to move the camera left, right, top, bottom, front and the back and so I'll be talking about those camera properties in the next video. If you have liked this video and if it's helpful so please put your comments in the comment section and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.